I now re recognize Ranking Member Morelli for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you uh, again to my colleagues. Thank you all. I um, want to start, if I can, uh, uh, Chief Manger, with uh, asking uh, a, a little bit about, again, uh, emotional health and wellness. And I also want to acknowledge uh, Gus uh, Papathanas. You know, I don't know, that's probably not, I'm not terribly good with Greek names, I'm a little better with Italian, but uh, Gus, thank you for uh, all your work. And, and Chief, thank you for your courtesies, having uh, us over at the Operations Center and meeting with senior staff. Uh, I think it's helped me and my staff get a much a better handle when you're, when you're there and you're talking to people and you're able to ask some questions about operations. It certainly helps, at least for me, to take theoretical ideas and, and, and uh, they make them much more tangible. But um, I wanted to go back to some of my opening comments, particularly around the wellness program uh, you offer through the Howie uh, Lieben Good Center. Um, can you just give an overview from your perspective of um, how that's going and how the, how the program's progressing? Well, I'm, I'm very happy to report, and I think this is the first time I've been asked about this at every hearing, but I, I, we have 16 full-time employees um, in the wellness center currently, and they're still, we're still building. Um, we, we've, uh, it's an employee assistance program, it's a peer support program, it's a wellness program. It, we have trauma-informed counselors, so it can, uh, we can deal with, with uh, PTSD problems um, with, for the officers. Uh, we've also um, provided uh, critical incident stress management training. 114 of our employees have taken advantage of it. We've got 87 more that are signed up to take that training. So we're going to have folks, uh, peer support uh, assistance, all throughout the department. Um, but our wellness program tries to address, um, uh, we've, we've looked at what's working around the country at wellness programs, and we've tried to get these best practices to make sure that we're um, addressing all of the needs that our department has. But, but we're also doing a formal needs assessment um, where we will hear from everybody in the organization about what they would like to see. So this is informing us as we continue to build this program. And if you're having interaction with officers um, and members of the force, what's the feedback been from your perspective? Are there things that they would like to see that you haven't been able to do yet or uh, is being received well? I mean, you just get a sense for how the, uh, how the members are dealing with it. It, it, go, it runs the gamut. I mean, you've got some officers that say, you know, I want to I get in better shape physically. I want to improve my nutrition. You've got other officers that are dealing with very difficult emotional problems, some at home, some to do with work. Um, so it's just a matter of, um, of having all of those services available to folks. Is, it, um, is there access 24 hours a day? I don't know how it works in terms of, I mean, if a member's having... If a crisis middle of the night, do they is it open? Can they access it? You know, I I I'm, I have to, I'm fairly certain there is because we certainly when we need someone from the wellness center, we can get get them 24/7. So um, uh, that that certainly will be uh, part of the way we operate. I don't know if we're there yet, but yeah. it certainly is the goal. So uh, in terms of uh, recruits, do they receive wellness training when they're at the uh, the federal law enforcement training center? Do you know if that's part of the it, it is. Um, uh, it, it's it's just basically an introduction uh, course. Um, we we talk about the importance of um, uh, understanding how the, the job can impact you, the stress of the job can impact you, what services are available, and how um, how to deal with that stress in, in a uh, in a as healthy a manner as as, as one can. Uh, so yes, they they, they get um, familiarized with that in the academy. Yeah, I'd love to uh, continue to be supportive of that. And if there's other things that we ought to be doing, I uh, would love to have that conversation. To just to shift gears, um, earlier this month, uh, a federal judge in the case Missouri versus Biden issued a pretty wide ranging preliminary injunction restricting the government's communication with social media companies that bars the executive branch from engaging with platforms on content moderation issues, with a few exceptions. Um, I'm just curious if you've been tracking the case and whether or not, because it, while it doesn't deal with the legislative branch directly, it does with partners uh, like the FBI and Department of Justice on intelligence gathering. Has this impacted your ability uh, to work threat cases and ga gather intelligence? Has it had an impact at all? Uh, not to my knowledge. I will get back to you. I'll talk to my folks, but not, uh, not to my knowledge. Um, and then uh, I don't have enough time, but I'm, I'm going to follow up offline. Just 
want to continue to, to ask questions about artificial intelligence and how you see that potentially as a tool uh, and also how you see it as uh, potential threats. And I'll probably come back to all of you in that regard. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Representative Morelli. We've been joined by another number of senators, including Senator Ossoff, Senator Britt, Senator Capito. Uh, Senator Welsh is with us, and I appreciate him allowing Senator Bennett to go uh, before him uh, because Senator Bennett has another time commitment. Senator Bennett. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you very much to my colleague from Vermont for letting me um, jump in.